When Dr Beecham was busy wielding his axe and hacking away at our railway network in the mid-60s, the German government were adopting a similar sort of strategy. But their end result was somewhat different from ours. The railways here are still nationalised and they operate under the name DB, which means Deutsche Bahn. The following film I've simply called DB Past and Present. In the early 70s, many small villages lost their train service, but in some cases the track was left as a reminder, or museum barn, as they call it in Germany. Many of the station buildings have since been converted into bars and restaurants. This happens to be one of my particular favourites. Another example, but this time with a real touch of nostalgia, is the station at Crayfelt North. The platform has been immaculately maintained and the buildings are now used as a bar and refreshment area. But the icing on the cake is that an old steam haul train stops here several times every Sunday during the summer months. The train runs along a nine mile length of track which many years ago was part of the regular railway network. I took a short ride on it just for old time's sake. It reminded me of bygone years when trains had corridors and separate seating compartments. Sticking your head out of the window was always a risky business. You would often end up with coal smuts in your eyes from the chimney of the engine, but in this case it's quite safe as this particular loco is oil-fired. It would be nice to see the fireman stoking the boiler and to experience once again that unforgettable smell of steam and burning coal. Instead, the boiler man here simply fills the tank with diesel. Level crossings these days are almost always automatic, but on many of the older crossings the opening and closing of the barriers was the job of the guard. He also had the responsibility of changing the points. At the terminus, and in order to make the return journey, the engine is changed from one end of the train to the other. and safely coupled up, we're all ready to go once again. Well, the scenery wasn't all that spectacular, but it was a very leisurely way to spend a sunny Sunday afternoon. The various modern day modes of transport start with the U-Bahn. U, of course, stands for underground. They are, in fact, trams which simply disappear beneath the streets as they approach the busy cities. The next in line is the S-Bahn. S means schnell and schnell is the German word for quick. 
The purpose of these trains are to ferry commuters quickly from the small suburban stations into the Hauptbahnhof, which means main city station. The real workhorse of the German rail network is probably this one. It is the RE, which means Rhine Express, and, as the name suggests, it serves all the main stations along the northern part of the Rhine, including Dusseldorf, Cologne, and all the way down to Koblenz. It's fast, it's smooth, and each coach holds twice as many passengers as on a normal train, because, as you can see, it's a double-decker. This is the EC, which serves virtually all European cities. The coaches appear to be quite old, but the interiors have been refurbished in order to cater for the long journeys that this train undertakes. The flagship of the fleet is the ICE, the Intercity Express. This train is the ultimate in luxury and in speed. The very latest generation of ICEs run between Cologne and Frankfurt on a specially constructed track which enables them to reach speeds of 196 miles per hour. We've come a long way since the days of steam power, so let's say thanks to the preservationists and the small army of volunteers who have provided us with the opportunity to travel on the rail transport of the past. Thank you.